same, or else you're going to get weird sounds. The sounds are going to be coming in at a different rate than your video is, and it's just going to, it might be weird. So just keep the frame rates the same if you're pulling your audio from a video. If you're pulling your audio from an audio file, then you don't have to worry about this. All right, uh, and I'm going to change the time to the time that I need for this, which is 3 seconds and 19 frames. So 3 colon 19. And then hit OK. Once you have your composition, go into your project panel and bring in the file for today, example audio.move. And uh, I'll turn off my background groovy music. Uh, so this is what, uh, and then once you have that, drag it into your composition. Um, so people in class, please mute your audio at this moment. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna uh, play this and just like, the same, like the, okay, so I'm gonna play it so you know what this is. So there you go. Um, oh yeah, that's right. When I play stuff from After Effects, it will only play through my computer. I forgot about that glitch. Anyway, also if you're working off of Bluetooth headphones, After Effects is super weird about playing the sound through Bluetooth headphones. I don't know what that is. You have to go into like some special settings. Anyway, so uh, it says, what's up everybody? I think dogs should vote. Um, so that's the audio we're gonna be animating today. So once you have this down here, you can hit, you can select that layer and hit L twice on your keyboard like we've done before so you can see the web form or the audio form. And you can see, how the uh, waves here reflect when words are being said and where pauses or breaths are being taken. So anytime that the wave gets really high, that's when something is being said loudly, and anytime it dips down low is when there's silence or just like a background noise. Thank you, Daria. Okay, so this is just gonna be our audio file. We don't need this stuff from Second Life. Second Have any of y'all played Second, Second Life? Life? Thank, Thank God. I'm so happy that that, that game is dead. It is a bad, bad game. Anyway, back when I was in college, it was like the Minecraft of games where like every teacher wanted to somehow turn a project around it. Like any, any teacher that was like trying to do something weird and cool was like, oh, why don't you build uh, a Buddhist temple from the time of the art history that we're learning in Second Life? I'm like, I don't want to make a Second Life account. Don't make me do this. I would have killed if it was Minecraft. No. <laughs> trauma. This is my trauma. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. So this is just the audio that we need. We don't need the visuals. So we're just gonna turn off the eyeball. And so even with the eyeball off, you can see that the audio is still on and you can still hear the audio playing. Uh, and you don't have to do anything fancy, like turn it into a waveform or what have you. You can be lazy and do it like this. Uh, we're also gonna make a little background. So now we have no visuals, so we need a background picture there. So I'm just gonna go up to my rectangle tool, click twice and get myself uh, a rectangle. By default, it'll be something horrifying like red. I'm just gonna take a different color, like a light red. <laughs> but it can be whatever color you want. Okay, no, Sims, Sims is better than Second Life. Sims is a, a legit game. Sims is a game. Damn. <laughs> 
Dario, yes. yes. Okay, okay, cool. cool. Um, Okay, so the next thing we're going to do uh, is because I don't really care about this background anymore, it is there, it exists. I'm just going to lock it so that I can't move it. I'm just going to hit that little lock button to the left of the shape. It just looks like a little lock and you just click that, that little square under the lock. Uh, and then I'm going to shy guy it. To the right of my shape layer, uh, there is this little dude. If you don't see him, make sure you hit toggle switches and modes and your little dude will show up. Hit the little dude so he's just a little noggin. Then go up to shy, hit shy, and he's disappeared. So now we don't have to worry about the background, it's gone. And this isn't required, I just think it makes it more useful when you're working with a lot of layers to just shy the ones that you're not gonna edit. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get type out. Uh, okay, so we're going to Go up to our text tool. You can also hit key, uh, T on your keyboard, the letter T. Um, or this little big T up here at the top. And you're just gonna click once and type in the things that you need to type in. Uh, so the first one is gonna be, what's up everybody? Once you're done, you just go up and click on your cursor, your uh, direct select tool, and you'll get out of it. It'll just be a layer. Um, then you're gonna take up your type tool again and make a, another layer that says, I think dogs should vote. Anything that you wanna animate, well, actually that's not true. Um, the way we're gonna animate these means that we need the two, um, these two phrases on separate layers. Okay, so we have our guys. You'll notice once you get the type tool out, you'll automatically have the type panels show up or type palettes on the side. So you'll have your character palette and your paragraph palette. You can also get these by going up to uh, the up at the top, this top bar here where it says like default, learn, standard, small screen, libraries. There's another like set of little arrows going off to the right. If you click on them, these are all the different workspaces, like the different like default panels that show up for different things that you're doing. You can click text, and then it will auto pull up all of the panels that it thinks you need for working in text and After Effects. So just like in Photoshop or in InDesign where you can change your workspace to reflect the type of work you're doing, like illustration versus painting versus photo, you can do that in After Effects too. Um, so that can be, that can be helpful. That's a, is that true? I can't believe that's true. Anyway. Um, okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change up our text styling. So we have these two words. They uh, might be in the default font. After Effects will do the last font that you use in After Effects. So if you're on the computers, it's probably like curry or new or, or something defaulty. Um, so, huh? Uh, so click on your text, go over to your character panel, and pick something that is uh, not defaulty, that, that works nice for this text. I choose Beastly. That's not a default font. Um, I think it looks dope as hell, though. It is a free font, because I don't pay for fonts very often. Because I'm broke. So other things you can do in the character palette, you can choose your font, you can choose your style, you can make it bold, semi-bold, italic, what have you. Make sure you're always doing that here. Always do the styles here, underneath the font. Uh, mine is a variable font, so it's just got these point systems. But um, normally it'll have like, let's find a normal font. Uh, Carlson, sure. Uh, wow, Carlson. Something that we'll have. Sure. Yes. Normally you'll have um, bold, oblique, uh, bold, oblique, oblique being like 
a sort of version of italics. Y'all have taken type before. Um, so those are all there. Always use those if you want to style your work. Cool. Uh, OK. Underneath that is your size. You can just click and drag your size, and it will increase or decrease. Or you can, you can click it and type in the number. You can also adjust the leading. That's off the size, the, uh, the space between lines. You can tra uh, adjust the tracking. You can adjust the kerning. That's all, all that there, all that good stuff is still there. Um, you can squash and stretch. That's good for like animating sometimes. I wouldn't recommend using this one for animating. I'll show you how in a second. I don't usually recommend squashing and stretching type unless you really know what you're, you're about, what your whole business is about. Um, and then here's where you can really mess it up. Don't do faux bold or faux italics. Just don't. I can't think of any time where that's a cool thing to be doing. Um, if you want bold or italics, find a font that has that as a style in it. Because uh, otherwise, it's going to look dumb as hell. Uh, also, you got all caps. You got 10 caps. Uh, superscript, subscript, everything your heart could desire is here in the character palette. I kind of like the way all caps look. OK. Um, let's get that out. OK. Um, now we're going to do markers. Oh, one other thing for like the paragraph palette. The paragraph palette still has left, center, and right. But what it does Instead of like really centering or right aligning, it'll put the uh, the anchor point on the left, the center, or the right. So if you click on center, it just puts the anchor point in the center of that text box. If you put it on the right, it puts that text on the right of that text box. So that's that's the difference in After Effects. Okay. So now we're going to do. Uh, some markers. So it's really annoying to have to keep scrumming through your audio to like hear it over and over and over again to place things at the right time. So what you can do to save your ears um, some annoyance is you can do markers. So I know that my audio starts right here. So I can make a marker that says audio starts here. You don't have to have the waveform up constantly. So to do that, you hit star on your keyboard. Or if you don't have uh, star on your keyboard, you can hit control star, or control eight for your star would be. You can hit shift eight, or shift whatever the star number is. So control star or shift star will get you there. If you have a numpad, you can just hit star. If you have a full keyboard, like a king, you can just hit star on it. <laughs> so what these things will do is they will either give you a marker that is on your timeline, that's the control star, um, or it'll give you a marker on the overall composition, that is the shift star. And what these things do is they add like just a little flag, and then you can double click on them and add start. Or um, I could put what, so I know that's the beginning of where what is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes, that is a control thing. Or that's like something you can fix in the control panel um, that I've done before and for the life of me. Yeah, OK. Um, you can just hit right click, marker, add marker. Find your to your work. This is going to here. OK, so we're going to do that for the rest of it. So this is the end uh, of everybody. So I'm going to add another marker here. Uh, 
Um, and then this is the beginning of, I think dogs should vote. Put another marker right here. And then I'll put it, lastly, another one at the end. Okay. And this way I don't have to have the letter form up the entire time and uh, I don't have to keep playing the sound over and over if it's driving me nuts. I can just have these things that I uh, refer to while I'm setting stuff down. Um, I should probably play it again when I'm near the end to refine it, but while I'm just like getting a rough guide of things, I can have these markers as where my stuff goes. Um, if you ever think you're gonna move your audio around, put your markers on the audio layer. Um, if you, for us, this isn't moving, like this is our only audio and this is as long as it's gonna be, so I, it's totally fine for us to put the markers on the timeline. Okay. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is trim these bad boys. So just like in animating when we were doing characters, we can uh, do our first text animation by just trimming the first word to exist when it's being said and trimming the second word to exist only when it's being said. So um, I'm gonna select my what's up everybody layer. You can, uh, the nice thing about these text layers is that the name of them is whatever you type. <laughs> So I'm gonna select that layer, I'm gonna go up to, um, I'm gonna put my cursor where it ends, which I put a, a marker on so I know it's right there, and I'm just gonna trim it so that it ends right there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with I think uh, dogs should vote. I'm gonna go to the beginning of I think dogs should vote and trim it, oops, wrong one. Uh, so that it starts right there. And again, trimming, uh, you can either just drag the beginning and ends of your time, your time marker, or you can hit uh, option brackets, beginning bracket and bracket to beginning and end trim. And so now we have, we technically have an, we technically have an animation going.
Okay. Uh, is Cedar in this channel? Hey, Cedar. Well, I could use her help for the next part because it's about to get complicated. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cause this, this part's about to get complicated, so people will have some, oh yeah, mm -hmm. um, we'll have some questions. We haven't started on the next part yet, um, but we're about to. So, we're gonna go into how to, um, do type animators. So, um, go to, uh, what's up everybody, and have your cursor so that you can see the words, what's up everybody. Uh, and then you're gonna go hit your flippy arrow next to, what's up everybody. Uh, and you're gonna hit the little arrow next to animate. And you're gonna select scale. Okay, so, so far nothing has happened. We need to give it some things to do. So we're going to change the scale so this little scale thing popped up down here under animator one, it created animator one, it created a range selector, and it created a, a new scale property. And we're gonna change it from 100 to 50, uh, 50%, yeah, 50%. So that second number there, oh, both of them do it. Okay, so just where it said 100, type in 50. Should shrink down really tiny. Now you get 10 moves. Okay, now to animate it. We're gonna go where it says range selector right above where it says scale. You're gonna hit that flip arrow. And you can see here it says start zero, end 100. We're gonna start at 25 and end at 45. So that kind of shows you what's happening here. The animator said, we told it, when you animate, scale it down to half size. And the range selector said, okay, so I'm gonna scale it down to half size from the beginning to end. That's what zero to 100 is. Zero percent to 100% is now half size. Once I change the start to 25, it moves up that line indicator to be 25% of the word this scale doesn't apply to. And then when I said end at 45, now everything after 45% of the way through the word doesn't have scale applied to it. So you can play around with these things and see like, oh, if I move 45, like a larger number, it's now encompassing mo more of the word. If I move that start down, you can see it's applying less of the word. So this range indicator says what this scale is applied to. See why I said this was getting complicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so this is just to demonstrate what is happening in here. Go ahead and change both of these numbers back to zero and 100. Okay, so this, is, uh, this next part is one we'll actually apply. So we're gonna scrub to the beginning of our sound, which is like, I'm just gonna put it like right before my first what's marker. Um, or the first, like the first waveform where it starts up again. So I'm just gonna move my time cursor there. Um, I'm gonna go to uh, start, the start that says 0%, and I'm gonna hit my stopwatch. And then I'm gonna move further down my timeline, not quite to the end, but you know, a little closer or to the end of everybody, so this like first sentence. And I'm gonna change it to 100. And that's gonna keyframe it from zero to 100. So it's going from um, the scale being applied to the whole word to the scale being applied to none of the word. So it's going from half size to full size as you go. So if I played through it, you can see it going down through it. Nice. nice. And it's and going it's letter by letter. So if I slowed it down, you'd see 
um, each of the letters sort of scales up as you scroll through. It's very fun. All right. Hit the down arrow. Okay, I'm gonna go through it one more time because I'm not sure where uh, the Discord got lost. Um, so I'm just gonna run through the steps one more time. Okay, so to add the animator, I have my text selected, so what's up everybody? Go to the word animate. Oh, oh sorry, uh, do the flippy arrow. Next to where it says text, on the right, there's gonna be a word animate with a little um, play arrow there. Click on that bad boy and hit the word scale. Okay, and now you should have, uh, it will automatically pop up animator one, range selector one, and scale. You're gonna change the value of scale to 50. And then open up your range selector by hitting this little flippy arrow, and you'll see the words start and end. Move your cursor to right before where the text starts, and add a keyframe on the word start. Just hit that little uh, stopwatch button. And then move down, move your um, timeline indicator down, and change zero to 100. And now, up, everybody? Did you do that? Yes, yes I, I did, did click, click the animated play button. Play oh, you're asking them if they, they could. Okay. okay, yes, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. okay, how are y'all doing? Okay, okay cool. cool. So this so seems like a pain like in the butt, butt, but let, let me show you why it's worth it. it. Uh, so we're gonna go over to where it says animator one, and it has now the word add and a little play arrow. Click the little play arrow. Click that bad boy. Where it says properties, uh, go to opacity. So add play button properties opacity and change that bad boy to zero. Now if you play through it, it does both of them. So you only had to animate once. You're just animating start from zero to 100, and you can add as many properties onto this as you want, and it will all use the same keyframes. So you can, you can just keep doing this. Uh, the next one that I think is uh, pretty good is rotation. So I'm just gonna add properties rotation. I'm gonna change that to the second number to negative 66 degrees. And now if I play it, they do like a little flippy up thing. So for that one, it was just add properties rotation. And then when rotation pops up, type in negative 66. Yeah, yeah, it looks dope as hell, and you only had to keyframe once. So it, it sort of melts your mind a little bit. Uh, like, it took me forever. And even still now, I'll be going through stuff, and like, why is it doing it like this? Um, but it's worth it, because once you figure it out, you just keep applying things to it, and it just keeps the same keyframes. So it's a pain in the butt, but it's worth it, eventually. <laughs> Oh, okay, gotcha. I thought he was gonna be like, it's being robbed. <laughs> I just realized it's raining and the windows are down. Uh, it's okay, because this next bit, uh, y'all don't have to do, but I wanna show you how to do it in case you, in case you want to. So you can just watch me for this one, but if you, if you wanna know it. So um, right now, the way these bad boys 
are animating is letter by letter. Sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want it to animate by word or by entire line. Um, and the actual way to change that is a little bit tedious, but it, you can. So the first thing I'm going to do um, with my text box, I'm going to go in here uh, and under, I have my range, like animator one, range selector, and then like below that is the word advanced. I'm just going to click the flippy arrow for advanced. And I'm going to change it uh, from percentage to unit. Pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, percentage to index. And then uh, based on character, I'm going to say based on words. So it's still not quite doing what I want. It's still like per letter. Like it's not, like it's rotating together as a word, but it's not like each of the individual letters is still like rotating separately. So to fix that, I have to go up, to go way up uh, and go to more options. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I go way up, like outside of my animator. It's right above the animator. It says more options and when it says anchor point grouping, I'm gonna change that uh, to word. So now, um, before I change that, I can like zoom in and show you real fast. Hey, you, there we go. Um, back when it was per letter, you can see like, especially like right here, there's a little special anchor point that the animator sets up and it puts it underneath each of the individual letters. When I come in here under more options and I say anchor point grouping, and I change it to word, it moves it so that there's just one anchor point per word. So now it's gonna rotate around that anchor point for the whole word. It's gonna treat it as if it's like one big rectangle. Um, one thing that I don't like about this right now is that it's rotating around like the little anchor point that it's made is in the center. Oh yeah, thank you. Is in the center of the word. I want it sort of coming down like a, like a director clappy box. So underneath where it says anchor point grouping word, I'm just gonna move this first number. Uh, Back, if it's gonna let me. Do you, oh, wrong cursor. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna make this like negative 94, and you can see that my little anchor points have moved back to the beginning of the word. So this little number here just says where that anchor point is, left or right, of the center of that word. Uh, and so now when I hit play, it does it. It does it per word. So I think that. That looks okay. I kind of liked it better with the individual letters, but when you're working, you might find a reason to to want to do it as a line or to these animations as a line or as a word, and so that's that's how you do it. It's a bit convoluted, so you don't have to do it with me for this one, but um, it it is available and and doable. Uh, yeah. So that's just to do it by word. You just go to range selector advanced, change units to index based on words, and then go up to more options anchor point grouping word. So in case you want it, it is there. It is possible. All right, so we have one animator going. You can have more than one. So say you have an animation that you want to occur at a separate time than the other ones. If you want it to happen after or before or at a different time than the anchor point that you have set up with like these animations here. That's okay, you can have more than one. So up at the top of your, your text, where you clicked before, where it says text, animate, colon, play arrow, hit that again. And go to fill color, RGB. And so now you can see another animator has popped up, animator two, it has its own range selector, and it has its own property. Right now it is a uh, fill color, so I'm gonna change that to a color that I think looks cool. And all it does is add a fill. So right now it's changed the text color. It won't animate because we haven't animated it yet. So I'm gonna go to near the end of what's up everybody, and just like around here-ish. Uh, and I'm going to go to my range selector one, hit the flippy arrow, start keyframes. 
uh, and change it to hmm, yes. Yeah. No, yeah, just keep it like that. that. No, no, keep it. Turn it to a hundred. Yeah. Uh, and then go to when he stops saying it, like here, and change that to zero. <laughs> so now we have a separate animator going, and I can adjust this as necessary for the words. <laughs> um, something like that, maybe? Yeah, so now, because I went from 100 to zero, uh, it applies to nothing, and then it applies to everything. So it's the reverse of what we did before. So you have it coming in animating. <laughs> It, it's, a, it's a bit fast, but so is he, so it's fine. You can come in after you do the keyframes and like move them around uh, to get the timing that you like. Okay, pool beans. Oh, I should probably move this boy boy around. Uh, cool. So we have our first animation done. That's animators. Any questions about animators? How would you get it to not blow the back of the letters in? If you just wanted it to change so that you could want everybody to change color at that point? Oh, yeah, OK. Um, then you would just, instead of going to zero at the end, you would just change it until it only went to the end of everybody, which looks like 50%. So it's going now from 100 to 50. So you're just you're just stopping the animator early. Yeah. Which is the nice thing about this. You don't have to like type out a whole different text layer to get everybody to animate differently. You can just have that range only apply to that section of the words. Okay. So scrum down, we're going to I think dogs should vote. We're going on to our next one. Uh, and I would like to center this. There we go. Okay. Get, get there. All right, so now we're gonna type on a path. So if you want things to move along a path, it's very similar to how we were animating before. We're gonna get our pen tool out. We're gonna have our layer selected, our type layer. So the I think dog should layer, have that selected, have your pen tool out. Um, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I need some space. I need to be able to see the gray around my composition so that I can do this properly. Uh, Okay, so I'm gonna, uh, what I want to happen is I want my text to fly in from off screen uh, and then settle in the middle. So I'm going to uh, click off screen, just click somewhere over here off to the left. And then I'm gonna click and drag a little curve in the middle here. Uh, and then I'm gonna click off on the right. So I have this one curvy line going, from, going through the composition. So I just clicked on the left, clicked and dragged for a nice curve in the middle, and then clicked again off to the right. So you should have a three-point line being drawn here. Uh, and make sure you had your text layer selected so that it's a mask on that text layer. Okay, so now we gotta get this text to go onto this mask. To do that, we're gonna go over to uh, our timeline, hit the flippy arrow next to I think dog should vote, uh, the flippy arrow on a mask. Oh, nope, I'm wrong. Mm, yep, okay. Uh, the flippy arrow on text, the flippy arrow on path options, and then where it says path, it says none, say mask one. Boop, it's on it. <laughs> it's under like a ridiculous number of flippy arrows, but once you do it, it's just like, it's just on it. 
So it's, it's both tedious and super easy. <laughs> OK, so the things that we're going to animate here, underneath where it says uh, path mask 1, down at the bottom, it says uh, first margin, last margin. So those are the things we're going to animate. Uh, we're going to go to our first margin and hit the stopwatch uh, at the beginning of, I think, dog should vote. So I'm going to move my timeline indicator over. Um, and I'm going to hit the stopwatch. And where it says zero, I'm just going to click and drag into the negative numbers until all of my text is off the composition. Because I want it to fly from off on. So I'm just going to make this first margin some big old negative number. I, mine's right eight, negative 856. How do you set up the mask? Uh, OK, uh, I'm going to start over real fast. Because it's really fast to do. OK. So, so text, text layer selected. selected. I think dogs should vote. Make sure you click on that bad boy. That's how you ended up getting a shape. You gotta click on it. Click on that layer. Okay, and then you go to your pen tool, this guy up here, or G on your keyboard, and you're gonna click off to the left of your composition anywhere over here, the lower left. You're gonna click and drag in the middle, make a nice little curvy line, and then you're just gonna click on the right over here. So now you have a little line going, and it is a mask. Your next, next step, step is, is to, to go, go over to where, to go over here to your type, type, hit that little flippy arrow, hit the flippy arrow under text, hit the flippy other arrow under path options, and it'll say path, none. Change that to your line. Is that too fast? I kind of speed ran that version. OK, cool, 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 cool. So I'm going to set my first margin. I'll go to beginning of my words, keyframe the first margin and then just make a really big negative number until my text is all the way off. Uh, and then I'm gonna move down in my timeline, somewhere like right around here, somewhere in the middle of this uh, utterance of the sentence. And I'm going to just scrum this first margin until it's in the middle. And now it's animated. You did it. It's type on a path. Uh, and just like anything, you can move these two keyframes closer together to make them faster. You can change the speed at which, actually, let's do that. You can change the speed at which these things start and stop between these two keyframes. So I'm going to select both of my keyframes here and easy ease them. So F9 on your keyboard. Or right, or right click, click easy ease, ease, if your, your function, function keys hate you. you. Right, right click, click keyframe like assistant, assistant, easy ease. ease. Now they're, they're easy ease. ease. They, they slow, slow in, slow out. out. Uh, you, you can, can also, also, with these uh, keyframes still selected, go to your graph editor. This little button up here in the top right. Or sorry, top left. Like that bad boy. And you can see the arch. I'm going to get my. Uh, the, this is taking. So it starts uh, slow, gets fast, and then slows down again. I can change that up so that like it starts really fast and then ends really slow. Just something a little custom. Um, if you don't see this exact curve, that's fine. Uh, there's just different ways of, of viewing it. The second button down here is graph type options. You can do speed or value graph. They do the same thing, it's just different ways of looking at it. Uh, and now if I hit it, it starts out really fast and then slows down like a roller coaster at the end, which I think is a cool look. I really recommend playing with the graph editor if you're going to animate uh, text because it, it makes it look really dope. Here we go. 
Your text is upside down. Who's? Hmm. Uh, try, so click where it says under path mask one. Click where it says reverse path. It should say off, click it and make it on. Um, which direction the text like snaps onto the, the line is sort of arbitrary. Like the computer guesses which one that you want, so you, you might have to go in and fuss with it. Okay, is everybody good on this? Give me a second. Ugh. Um, uh, we're, we're doing stuff in class. One second. Do you need help, Jenny? Jenny. Jen, do you, do you need help? You got it. Okay, question mark? <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, so we're gonna do something that's not text related but adds a nice little panache to it. So don't forget that you can animate shapes and stuff to emphasize your words. Like when you're doing kinetic type, you, you don't have to have just words in there. So we're gonna add a little rectangle Make sure that you don't have nothing selected. Nothing selected. And we're gonna go to our rectangle tool and just make a nice little line. Something like, something like this. Uh, and it will automatically be the fill color you last used, so I'm gonna change it to something else. Okay. okay, just a little just rectangle. rectangle. Okay. okay, and then, and then we're gonna, gonna move the anchor, anchor point. point. So, so when you draw a new shape, shape the anchor, anchor point automatically is in the center of the composition. So we're gonna, gonna move it. it. We're gonna go up to our anchor move, move thing, thing, the pan behind pool, which, which looks, looks like, like a dotted rectangle with a bunch of arrows. And uh, if you don't see your anchor point, just click off of your layer and click the layer again. I don't know why it's weird like that. Um, and then move that anchor point to the left side of your rectangle. So you want it on the left, the left vertical bar. Where on that left vertical bar? It doesn't matter as long as it's on that left vertical bar, uh, the left side of your rectangle. Okay, and I'm gonna move uh, my timeline indicator 
to the end of where he's talking, so like right on my last marker there, the vote, which is near the end of the whole composition. Uh, and I'm just gonna go to uh, my layer scale. So I'm just gonna click that layer and hit S, and it opens up S. It opens up scale. It opens up S, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to keyframe it at 100%. So I clicked on my layer, I hit S, and that popped open scale, and just leave all those numbers right where they are and hit the stopwatch button to make the keyframe. Okay, and then I'm gonna move further down. Oh, actually, sorry, first, while I'm still here in the scale, I'm gonna unlink it. So right now there's a chain so that it will scale proportionally. I'm gonna hit that, so now it will scale unproportionally. Uh, and I'm gonna move my timeline indicator down just a little bit. So I'm just moving it from where I had that keyframe back just a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to change, I believe the percent. Nope, the X value, there we go. I'm gonna change that first number to zero. So it says, uh, it should say zero comma 100. And now if I hit play, it, it makes a little underline. Uh, and it's a little slow, so I'm just gonna move in some stuff. Yeah, move, move it in, yeah. Um, it's not quite under vote, so I can rotate it. To like more line up with how my word is. You don't have to keyframe that. It's regular, regular rotation. Yeah, noise. Um, another thing that makes this look nice is doing easy ease, going into the graph editor, those sorts of things. Um, but this is just to remind you that you can still do your other animation stuff for just like lines and emphasis and like little confetti that pops up out of your words or, or what have you. Um, so you can put illustration around your words and use the same sort of principles and, and get some cool stuff. Um, so now we can play it and see how it looks all together. Oh. <laughs> There you go. You made your first text animation. All right, uh, so that's that's it. Go ahead and export this bad boy and submit it to Canvas. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. We attempted to record this one, so we'll see how it went out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, um, using animators is, like, hard until it is.